Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for Bug of the Month, our tying portion for Bug of the Month. Again, it's April, so we're talking about scuds. And you all may have seen our video that we shot on the river where we were talking about fishing scuds and rigging for scuds. Now we're gonna bring you the tying portion. As we spoke about in the last video of Bug of the Month, there's not a whole lot of scud patterns out there. But I'm going to tie for you today one of my favorite scud patterns. It's actually my signature pattern. It's called the slap shot scud. All right, and with this bug, and, and with a lot of the flies that I tie, I, I really consider this fly a really good guide fly. It's, it's very easy to tie, it's very effective, and it's really tough. So it kind of checks all those boxes. As a guide fly, you'll be able to spin out a bunch of these very quickly, and they're super effective. Now. I'm going to start with tying the jigged version of this fly and this is a fly I love to tie on the Umqua XT500 jig hook. It's got the little micro barb, it's got a really wide gape and it just really bites very well. It gives me a lot of room to work uh, when I'm tying this fly as well. So I'm going to start with this XT500 and an Umqua Radiant Tungsten Bead. For this fly, I'm going to use orange uh, because we are going to tie the orange colorway. I like to use wax thread. For this orange version, I'm going to use fluorescent orange UTC 70 waxed thread. So I'm just going to place this radiant bead on the jig hook. I'm going to slide it clear up to the top of the hook. Very simple. I'm going to start some thread here. So I'm gonna liberally lay down this thread. I'm not too worried about keeping a small profile. And I'm gonna wrap this thread back to about the bend of the hook. Once I do that, I can cut off my tag end here. Now, you can kind of go back and forth and really do a good thread layer. I actually think the thread layer is important here uh, for one of the upcoming steps of this fly. It helps keep everything kind of contained. So I'm just gonna kind of end there with my thread wraps. So once we have our thread wrap in, I'm going to actually take some ostrich churl, and I like this orange ostrich churl. Um, be careful when you're buying materials like this, you really kind of want to hand pick it because the dye batches can vary so much. I really like this light orange color, uh, especially for this fly. And for this fly, I like the really big feathers. Um, the bigger the better for this fly. So I'm, I'm just actually going to take off one of the one of the ostrich feathers here. Very thick. And on ostrich feathers you're going to see a spine. So there's a side that has the spine and there's a side that's kind of open. And for this I'm actually going to put the spine side towards me when I tie this in. I'm just going to tie it in to the hook, go slightly down the bend, and my ostrich churl is sitting right there. So I'm just gonna kinda end there with my thread wraps. Now what I'm gonna do is I actually like to mix dubbing uh, on this orange version. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of UV ice dub in this orange, hot orange colorway. And I'm also gonna use some sow scud dubbing in this orange colorway. And how I do this very simple if you want to mix dubbing. If you want to mix up a big batch, you can you get a uh, coffee grinder and add equal parts uh, of material to the coffee grinder and mix it all up. I like to just do it by hand. And I'm gonna use pretty equal parts here. So that ice dub's gonna give it a nice sheen while this the, the regular South Scott dubbing kind of, um, kind of mutes everything keeps it from being just ultra bright. And all I'm gonna do is kinda roll this dubbing, pick a little bit apart, place it on top, pick it apart. I might do this a dozen times or so. And then I'm gonna have a, a good little mixture of dubbing here for this fly. I want that thread to be way back towards the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to take my dubbing and I'm gonna do a semi-tight semi-loose however you want to look at it dubbing noodle I don't want it super tight here because it makes teasing the dubbing 
uh, rather difficult. So I want to have a dubbing noodle that looks something like this. And as with anything, when you're putting dubbing on a fly, less is more, you can always add some, it's always harder to take it away. So I'm just gonna start wrapping this in kind of a loose fashion. And I want this dubbing to really kind of build up on this hook as I get to the eye of the hook. I'm going to wrap it a little tighter there. Let's see, a little too much there. And I want this to be really kind of furry. I don't really care what it looks like here. Now, from this stage, I actually am gonna come in and do a whip finish. And the reason you do this, when you start teasing this material out, a lot of times you can break your thread. So if you break your thread, you don't have to start completely over. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a dubbing brush in the softer side of the brush, and I'm actually gonna tease this, and I'm teasing it up. This fly is actually gonna ride hook point up. So I wanna tease this dubbing up a little bit. As you're teasing that, you can see how it comes off the inside of the hook and starts to get smooth under here. And this is kind of key. The reason I do this first is a lot of times you'll have a lot of extra material um, and I can kind of come through and trim some of this. I still want that material there, but I can take off those really super long pieces. So with my ostrich hurl here, I'm actually going to wrap underneath and then towards myself. This is a size 14, so I want at least five good segments in here. Five to six is what I try to shoot for. Even segments when I wrap this, and I'm gonna end up right behind the eye of the hook, right behind the bead. I'm gonna throw a secure wrap in once, secure wrap twice, and kind of fold that ostrich hurl back. From this point, I can actually come in and get rid of that guy. And I'm actually going to do my final whip finish right here on the fly. From this point, I can cut my thread. Now I'm going to flip this over. And what I like to do is I like to have like a little cup of water or you know use some sort of moisture. Um, and I wanna get my fingers, my thumb and my forefinger just slightly damp. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to grab that fly and push the material down. And as you can see, you're getting a nice uniform uh, back of the scud here. So I want a little bit of pressure, but I'm not really uh, pinching hard here. Once I've done that, the basic shape of the scud has taken place. Now I'm gonna use some UV thin, some Loon UV clear thin um, for the back of this bug. Again, I wanna keep this material nice, nice and moist and so it points down like that. Now I'm gonna take this material and this is a pretty important part of this fly. Um, before I do the UV part, I actually turn my UV lamp on. So I turn it on and I have it facing down here. This is so when I start to do the UV on this fly, I don't want it to completely soak the fly. I just want it to barely coat the back. And this is what's gonna act as the scud back. Um, so if my light's on, as soon as I put my, uh, my UV on, I can just hit it with that light and it, it'll keep it from soaking in. So again, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start real close here towards the top of the fly and I'm gonna get this material just kind of coming out of the applicator here. Once I do that, I'm gonna hit it real quick with that UV. And what you can see here is it starts to make a darker back there, darker scud back. My light is still on and I'm actually gonna come through and I'm gonna add a little bit more of the UV just to give it a little bit more of an arch there under the hook, just like that. I can hit it back with that UV and it, it keeps it from soaking into the fly. After I cure that, I'm gonna inspect the fly. I can rotate it around and I just wanna have a slight arch on the back there. So since we're tying this fly basically upside down, you're not gonna get a true arch like you would with a regular scud hook but this gives it that overall 
um, kind of shape. Now from this point, I'm gonna take my dubbing brush and, and this is a technique that I like to, do, like to use when I'm teasing dubbing. I'm actually gonna put my thumb right on the fly like this and I'm gonna take my dubbing brush and tease out the material. And this will start to make the overall shape of the scut. So I'm using the soft side of that dubbing brush. If it's being a little, um, a little difficult, then I can use the harder bristles on my dubbing brush and tease out real specific parts. So one of the reasons you put that UV on first too is that ostrich hurl is really fragile and you can break it very easily um, if there's nothing on the back of this. So you can see how I'm, this scud is overall taking some shape here. And you just want to do this till, you know, you feel it looks right. You can see those nice segments in there with the ostrich hurl. Now what I can do is I can come through with my scissors and I can actually, I want to trim this in the arc so what would look like the bottom of the scud or the legs. And when I trim this stuff, I always want to do, I don't want to go like right close to the fly. So if you mess up a little bit, um, you can kind of come back and clean it up. And really what I'll, what I'll do is I'll tie a bunch of these and then I'll trim them at the end. So um, I can just spend a lot of time actually trimming these flies and making them look pretty. Again, you can go through and tease out some more material. just to make this look nice and sexy. Again, you can go back with some UV if you want to actually even heighten the profile of that scud back. And that is the slap shot scud. So when you fish this, this will ride hook point up just like this, but it has that really nice shape of a scud. simple. I'm going to start with just placing some hook on some hook. <laughs> Dude.